When I was a kid, I was a tomboy. I was the first girl in Little League in my town. I was, I was that person, you know? I was just always a sports kid. Growing up, both my parents were really athletic, like very sporty people. We grew up hiking, biking, just going on walks with the dog, skiing as a family almost every weekend. We were never just sitting home and watching TV. You know, that's not our family. I was like, come on, let's get out and do something. I played competitive tennis in college, and it's just always been a part of who I am as an athlete. She's playing tennis all the time, and her knee was hurting her, her back was hurting her, shoulder, elbow, because of like sports injuries, but I didn't think anything was wrong. It was kind of started to be a joke, because it was like among my tennis, oh, Margie's injured again, oh, another surgery. I was like that bionic woman. I've had seven orthopedic surgeries, a foot, a knee, an elbow, two wrists. Finally, I went to an orthopedic surgeon and he realized that all my injuries were on the left side. Also, I had just a tiny bit of a tremor and I mentioned it to him. And so I think it made him think, okay, tremor, injuries on one side, go get a neurological exam. And so I'm like, oh, it's me overdoing it again. That's why I'm tremoring, because my arm was tired but I also wondered a little bit, kind of quietly, whether it was Parkinson's. Once or twice a month, maybe, when I've been playing, I've been falling. And it's just a momentary, like, I just lose my footing and I, and I kind of stutter step and then I fall. Like, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And everyone goes like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, no, I'm fine, don't worry, just keep going. Just, I don't want attention drawn to me, because for me, if it doesn't feel good, it's embarrassing to fall. It's like, I just, just kind of wish it didn't happen, but it's part of it, I guess. This one hasn't changed one bit. No. No. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> that was the When I got diagnosed, I was kind of in shock. Because I was young, I was just, a month shy of turning 49, so I was 48. That was like a deer in the headlights. I was like, wait, what, really? My parents sat my brother and I down at the dinner table and told us. Look at this, like, you... It was definitely hard because my mom is such a strong person. She was very conscious that she didn't want to put that burden on her children. I wanted to be okay with it and feel strong enough and confident enough that when I told them, I wouldn't fall apart. Izzy was like, Mom, that's just so not fair that you have to get that. And Max, he's a different kid, and he's like, okay, Mom, really? Is that, I, it's hard to believe, but if, if that's really true, can we make jokes about it? You know, like, he was being the funny guy, but that's how he was dealing with it. And I, my kids are very different from one another, so I, I, I understood that. And I, I told Izzy I really wanted to do the first Parkinson's Unity Walk. But it happened to be on the same day as her 16th birthday party. <laughs> And I asked her, like, do you mind if we do the walk and change your birthday party to the next day? And she said, well, why don't we just make my birthday party where we walk for you, me and my friends? I did not expect that. It was the first year, and my mom had only been diagnosed a few weeks before. It seemed like a relief for maybe at the time what I needed. I had a very supportive group of friends that were willing to, to come out for that. You can have this disease and, and just be really normal. I work at a school for kids with learning disabilities, and it's like you can do most of what you were doing before if you take care of yourself and be proactive. Maybe that's a lesson to teach people. I think we're getting a whole new system, so maybe we all have to be I was a little worried professionally at work how to tell people, yes, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I'm really okay. But it took a while for me to feel comfortable enough to tell the whole staff as a group. 
a lot of people were like silent. They didn't know what to say. And I told them, if you have any questions, ask me. Just ask me. It's okay. After I was diagnosed by the neurologist, I was able to find a really good movement disorder specialist who was well suited for me. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good to see you. He gave me a lot of confidence and reassurance that I was going to be okay. Now touch your nose, touch my finger, back and forth without moving your shoulder, just move your arm. Margie has a Parkinson's for about 10 years, and she's doing not well. She's doing extraordinarily well. Now with the right hand, you go one, two, three, four. She's really an outlier with a complex process of acceptance and fighting. If you can do two or more forms of exercise, it's probably better. Yeah, because so you I challenge do, the brain right. in different ways. So like I do boxing, I do agility stuff, I do... Margie asked me how much yeah. should I do, and my kind of default answer, as much as you can, as much as you can for Margie is a different meaning than for most people. Like that? Or yeah, so try to resist the force, so don't just fall to the floor. Yeah. We know that consistent exercise has immediate benefit. But what's much more important is a sustained effect over time. So much so that we know that exercise can delay disease progression. And we truly don't have any other way to delay disease progression. I have found it makes me feel better. I think the endorphins are going and it's creating new neural pathways. I really feel that this is what I gotta do to feel good. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep doing it as much as I can and as long as I can. I feel like I have a job at work, and then I have a second job, which is to work out. I just have to, not a choice. Okay, does that feel a little too tight or anything? No, nope, it's good. Okay, great. I've been a research subject for Columbia Teachers College Neuro Rehab Lab, and their whole motivation and goal is to show that exercise really slows down the progression of neurodegenerative diseases. They want you to walk through the orange doors before they close. Okay. Go ahead. Margie is someone who from the get-go has just shown tremendous determination and has really, I think, encapsulated a lot of the aspects of physical activity and exercise that we promote. We also have these measures of the balance that we can look at and see how that changes over time or... I really think she's a, a living example of how, how beneficial these kinds of interventions are in combination with pharmacological interventions. When I say go, I want you to pick up a coin with your left, transfer it to your right, and put them into the bank in order of highest value to lowest value. And while you're doing that, I want you to recite every other letter of the alphabet, starting with the letter A. The symptoms of Parkinson's that I've felt over the years, everything's a little harder. Okay, fingertips on the table. Go. A, C, E. When you're doing your daily, you're buttoning your shirt, you're, you're shampooing your hair, it's hard to get my hands moving, my fine motor. Emotionally, I'm more anxious, I think. A lot of people get depressed. I'm like an upbeat person. I've never really been a depressed person. So I don't go in that direction. I go toward anxiety, and, and I think I am more anxious than I was before. Let your head start. That's it, neck, shoulders. Beautiful, so you can feel that movement on your ankles, right? Yeah. There are more things than just exercise that go into, I think, that's helped me be okay. You're gonna let your eyes go to the left. Beautiful. Now, hold on. One of them is the Alexander technique. Let's uh, breathe. People with Parkinson's <laughs> tend to have a stooped over posture, and so they're so not quite aware nice of their breath and the way they move and the way they walk. And having Alexander lessons does help. Thinking about your whole torso lengthening and widening. It's lessons, but it's also physically touching my body in ways that made me feel like like, it just let go, everything let go. And so then feelings let go. I mean, it's just, I guess I start thinking about, like, the reality of the disease kicking in. Right. Like, right. Yeah, like, will I be able to play? So it's, like, funny. When I'm on the table thinking about it, it comes out. It's very real. It's really got to be hard to feel yourself not being able to do what you've always been able to do so yeah. easily. It does help, like it calms my whole body down, it gets the feelings out, you know? 
the emotions that kind of stick up, like inside. It's a combination of that plus breathing, you know, taking deep breaths. And, then, and I, I like learned how to do that on my own. But that's been a process. People get really like worried about me. I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just stop, I'm fine, you know? And I gotta keep going. Yes. So, I mean, that's my biggest worry. Rosie! I think my positivity like comes from support. And it comes from a network. It's not just my family. It's my friends. It's my tennis friends. It's my work friends. It's my friends with Parkinson's playing ping pong. Ping Pong Parkinson started out for me as just a fun place to play ping pong with people that might have Parkinson's and it's become a community. It's become a support group without trying to be. It's such a good feeling. I feel really happy when I go there. Ping Pong seems like the thing that I can keep doing for a while because it really doesn't require a lot of space to keep moving around the court like it's small. And my reactions are really good. I think we're the only place in the world that has an organized weekly ping pong Parkinson's program. And there's a lot of evidence that shows that ping pong in particular is good for Parkinson's people. People with Parkinson's come and we get volunteers to hit with them because maybe it will help the community. Shift your weight to your right foot if you're a righty, left foot if you're a lefty. Sometimes I act as a volunteer because, you know, my level of ping pong is similar to the people who volunteer, so I hit with the people who are more symptomatic. I feel like I need to give back too, so being involved with this community, I'm doing fundraisers, I'm doing the walk, the Parkinson's Unity Walk. This year I had a team and we made almost $16,000. I was like really excited to see that we did that as a group. So you're a large? My family was there and it was like a combination of family, friends from my past or current, and then ping pong people. It was like all coming together. It was really fun. We got ping pong Parkinson's. We got ping pong Parkinson's coming in. I liked it that it was about our group. It was the ping pong Parkinson's group, and I really felt like, okay, this is what this is about. It's about community and connectedness and helping each other. Everything was above and beyond. People really did a lot. I just love having everyone together. It's so worth it, and it really makes my heart warm, you know, that I have such support. And that's really what it means to me, is support. I struggled to keep up with my mom and her exercise and her pace. When we go for walks in the woods, or cross country skiing or whatever, I have to try to keep up with her. She still beats me at tennis every time. My body, is, fortunately, is functioning pretty well. There are things I'm doing that I think that a lot of people like my age can't do. And I think that's important for the public to know that we're not sick. Our body has a disease that we're just dealing with. I'm in better shape, I think, than I was years ago, so maybe that's fortunate. <laughs>